Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. It's that boy G playing. Don't give a damn. He cooler than the fan. Walking real tall. Some say he's man. We got Swift in the building. We got the Reverend back on change of plans. How you doing? Man, it's Bro. the Reverend. Ain't nothing but some more of it, man. Yeah, straight up, straight up. First, I want to say. We back, man. Hey, oh, I got you. Hey, yeah, hey, you gotta, you gotta, hey, yeah, you gotta hit that on camera. I ain't, I'm rolling right now. He gotta hit this on camera, bro. Hey, it's good, bro. It's good. It's good. Boom. Before you do taste that, I want to say that, man, bro. Well, I, well, we first started that, and where you, I mean, you, you've been doing the manager thing for a little while, but now, bro, you doing yo. Dang. Oh man, you I appreciate it. Working hard, bro. You like as far as Texas, like you, your name arguably is like <laughs> one of the best managers in Texas. Man, I and appreciate to me, that. That's I appreciate me. that, brother. Real I talk. Appreciate that. Real yeah. talk, man. But how you, how you feeling, bro? Ah uh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm excellent. I'm excellent, man. I can't complain. God is good. We steady progressing. We yeah. steady moving forward. Yeah. You know that's that's what it's about, man. Life is about progression. Yeah, yeah. It is. It is, man. Um, we in your city. We in H Town. We got the slab behind us. We got the vibes. We here, man. I want to get straight into it. Um, we'll talk about your artists later, but I'm gonna address it. Um, recently, I did an interview with this guy. 2K. Uh-huh. And we got on live. You joined him. And bruh, his he had he had an outlandish, egregious, distasteful Views view on, on pimp on, on, pimp, the, on the pimp. And we know that the South love pimp. Right. And what I think we talked, it had to be no more than three weeks ago, I think. Right. And bruh, when I say when you got on that live, that's my first time seeing his mood shift. Right. Now you like debunked everything he said. Now shout out, he my guy, whatever. Right. But can we talk about that? Cause it's relevant. Man, cause what we don't do is we don't lead with feelings. We don't lead with feelings. We don't lead with opinions. We lead with facts. I just came at the man with facts. That's it. That's all. Cause you gotta realize, Pimp wasn't just an artist, man. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't, we wasn't just a rapper. Let me correct myself. He wasn't just a rapper. He was an artist. He was a producer. He sung his own hooks. I remember Bum B saying in the interview, the easiest thing to do being UGK is because all he had to do was rap. He just had to come in and write his part. Pimp had put everything else together. Man, you can't beat that. And, and I refuse to allow anybody to disrespect the memory of the pimp. What you mean? <laughs> yeah. For sure. Um, man, he, he, he said that pimp music was trash. And when I initially did his interview, bro, like I told him and I said this plenty of times, I almost stopped it. Yeah. But as an interviewer, you got you have an opinion. Yeah. This is a platform. Regardless of how I feel, I'ma let you speak when we when, when you on the platform. Right. That's what he said. Now he said, mind you, as a person, I like Pimp, but his music, no, I just can't do it. And then he spoke about him and BG. And I didn't agree with that as well, but it's been going all over the internet. He recently did another interview talking yeah. about it. So I'm like, bruh, like. I mean, people are allowed to have their opinions. For sure. But what I will say is, there's a difference in having an opinion and it's, and it's a difference in clout chasing. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes people just say stuff for shock value. Oh, I'm just going to say this because I know it's going to going to get some views or it's going to get some likes. Man, he can't believe that. He cannot believe that. Mm -hmm. Because when I was sitting there with him and we on live, you, you changed your opinion. So you couldn't believe that. You had to be in the interview just saying stuff for the sake of saying it. Mm -hmm. I know he probably secretly be in his room or wherever he at jamming some pimp. I know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now I will say this though. Pimp Prior to going to jail was better than pimp that came out of jail. I say that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But trash never. 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 Man. But how you talked about the album sales. Well, he talked about album sales, but you talked about the time, the timeline, the music, what was pimp was going through, stuff like that. And you was just telling me, hey, pimp did this, that, 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 that. And I was just sitting back like, yo. Because I, some of them albums that was put out wasn't his 
official solo albums. He was in jail when some of that stuff came out. That was stuff that the label was putting together to keep the Pimp brand going and keep putting out music because Pimp had a lot of music. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to gauge something that somebody else put together versus, because ain't nothing like you selling your own product. Nothing. I could tell people about change of plans, but G is the brand of change of plans. You know what I'm saying? You're the man behind it. Mm -hmm. So you talking about it and me talking about it is two different things. So you could sell my album, but ain't nothing like me selling my album. Right. You right about that. And then how long Pimp did anyway? Like four or five years? He did four years, yeah. Yeah, so that's a long time. To be away from yeah. in the rap game, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then trying to come back and get back in, yeah, that's a long time. And a lot of things have changed. Man, things changed six months yeah. in the in the music business. Six months. What's what's hot in the trend now might not be hot in the trend in six months. You right. You right. You right about that. And you being a Houston historian. Yeah. Knowing what's going on, like, how, how did you feel about the music now? Um, in, in Houston, um, we got we got people that's doing their thing, like D Baby. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Lil Pat just just went gold. Shout you know out to Lil saying? Pat, man. He he doing his we thing. Go, we gonna get into Lil Pat, with, <laughs> you know. Um, you got you mean Sauce Walker just put out a uh, a message the other day when he was saying everything is over now. Like we not competing with each other. We coming together as artists in Houston, and we trying to make this thing bigger, mm -hmm. you know, together. So I think that that's where it's gonna go. And I, w I will say this, man. Shout out to Mexican OT, man. Him and Pow Wow just went platinum. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. just went platinum. Man, shout out to B Look. I mean, B Done and G Look too. Yeah. Cause they, you know, what I'm saying they doing some management stuff, and they, man, they everywhere. Yeah. You know, they pack. And, and Mexican OT got a good record, got a nice record. Yeah, overstepping. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, man, that dude doing his thing. But you brought up South Walker, and I and and I know recently I seen South Walker go at this guy. Some guy said that Screw didn't invent Screw. Or what, what, what? It was a dude from Florida. Oh, okay. Cause, the, cause the, I, the guy from Florida said that uh, DJ Screw didn't invent Screw. They've been slowing down music in Florida. From what I know is. Florida was known for fast-paced dance music. You know what I'm saying? Uncle Luke, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Stuff yeah. like that. That's what Florida was known for then. They like fast music. Screw, or I'm not gonna say screw, slow down music was originated in Houston by two DJs in Houston. Mm -hmm. That was originated, that was before DJ Screw. DJ Screw perfected it and he perfected the chop and the bring back. You know what I'm saying? But you can't call it screw if DJ Screw didn't do it. Oh, okay. Cause I, I put it like this. I, I'm into Texas, but I don't, I'm not in Texas business. Yeah. So I, I get on Stay Down, shout out Stay Down, yeah. and OTR views. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna, I, I'm probably go to OTR views first, cause that's Nick, my guy. But I, yeah. I look at a lot of stuff, so I try to tune in what's going on in Texas. But I didn't post it. I looked at it yeah. and I'm like, all right, what's Sauce Walker talking about today? Yeah. I was like, all right, boy. Yeah, he was just explaining the origin of, of slowed down music. Mm. So, you, but you have to think about it. Why do they call it Screw? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because DJ yeah. Screw perfected it. Mm. We don't call it slowed down music. When somebody has something slowed and it's chopped, they call it Screw. Mm -hmm. Because DJ Screw made it famous. DJ Screw, yeah, you you right, you right. But it's, it's still Texas, too. Yeah. And we in Houston. Well, really, really, it's not just Texas all over the world now. Oh, it, now, well, yeah. People in the UK jamming screw. Yeah, yeah. When I when when ASAP Rocket first came out, I thought he was from Texas. I didn't even know he was from Because New York. he had the old Houston swag. Yeah, I, I didn't know. He had, the, he had the grill in his mouth. Yeah. He he was doing the whole, he mm. had the grill, he had the... In the, he had the uh, the slow down, all that in his videos. The end of the song mm -hmm. was slow, you know? Yeah. Like, man, a lot of people steal a lot of Houston culture and then don't pay homage to where it came from or where they got it from. That's why I mess with Drake so tough, because he going to tell you, man, I, I mess with Houston. You know what I'm saying? I got a lot of swag. Uh, uh, you know, I'm paying homage to the H. Mm -hmm. I respect that. Because you can't just take something from somebody and then know, and then take it worldwide and then don't say where you got it from. Yeah, man, man, a lot of people. I, I've been I've been hearing a lot of good stuff about Drake lately, despite of what's going on with Kendrick. I was talking to um 
um, producer Black and Mild from New Orleans. He produced Nice for Wood. He said, bro, when the split sheet came, Drake had gave Manny Fresh a percentage because he said, get your roll on. Yeah. He said, Drake didn't have to do that, yeah. but he did. I seen, a, I seen an interview of Zero talking about, man, Drake put me on the credits. Yeah. And stuff. So he, he, he doing good business. Yeah. And he doing stuff for the people. And then if I'm going to get some bounce, I'm going to I'm gonna make sure the right person get credited. No, nah, facts. Like, like I said, I've been hearing good stuff about Drake, regardless of what's going on. Yeah, I mean, it's not regardless of what's going on, man. This is hip-hop. That's how hip hop was was born. It's freestyle battling. It's go the back and forth for uh, who's the better MC. That's 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 been going on for years, bro. It's just two big artists, titans going back and forth and going at it. Now the whole personal thing. I'm not in people's personal business, you know. But for as battle rapping and all that, man, they try to say the most disrespectful stuff to you. Some of this stuff don't even have to be true, but it's a narrative. So if I could push a narrative to win the battle then that's what they going to do. And if I could sway the people and turn the people against you, that's what they going to do. So I'm not, I, we can't say that whatever going on with them right now, because we don't know if none of that stuff is true, man. Yeah. At all. Yeah, you right about it.